Hello to the Masters in Palliative Care Class of 2020. On behalf of the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy's faculty, staff, and alumni, I offer you my sincerest congratulations on your graduation, a milestone you soon will not forget. One of the rites of passage that the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted is the traditional graduation ceremonies for our students. Like you, I am devastated that we can't recognize your tremendous achievements in person as a community right now. I salute those of you who have been working on the front lines of this pandemic in your roles as physicians, nurses, pharmacists, chaplains, and social workers. Your commitment to your profession and to the thousands of people impacted by this pandemic is remarkable and inspiring. We are proud of you. And we are so proud to now count you among our alumni family. In my 12 years as Dean of the School of Pharmacy, I've witnessed the graduation of approximately 2,000 students. And now it is your turn. When thinking about the graduates of our Master's in Palliative Care program, several words come to mind. Brave, intrepid, daring, and innovative. As ambitious working professionals, the majority of you already had full-time jobs, but you wanted to pursue additional education and a high-profile discipline that will now position you to make an incredible impact in the field of palliative care. So what makes the Master's in Palliative Care program so unique? One of the most important priorities for this program is fostering an interprofessional team-based approach to caring for an incredibly vulnerable population, individuals as well as their families who are facing a serious illness. In fact, each course in the program is taught by two or more faculty members from different disciplines to better model interprofessional practice for our students. But students report that they learn as much from each other as they do from our faculty. Another unique element of the program is the opportunity for students to craft their own plan of study with a wide variety of electives that are offered to meet the individual needs of the diverse professionals enrolled in our program. Graduates, you have now been well prepared to engage more deeply and fully in your career in caring for patients in developing hospice or palliative care programs to earn a promotion, to specialize in a specific aspect of palliative care, or to supplement your primary job with the special skills of a palliative care provider. As your fellow alumni will tell you, there is something about the experience you've had as a student at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy that will energize you and give you the confidence and the fearlessness to set out on a path to extraordinary success. My advice during this unprecedented time in the world is to continue to focus on what is important to you, to be leaders who challenge the status quo approach and contribute to the greater good, to be optimistic and to use your knowledge, your skills, and your passion to drive innovation and change, to recognize all that you have to offer and that you begin your career at a time when your skills and your expertise are so sorely needed. Truly, there is no limit to what you can achieve. I offer you my congratulations on a job well done. Your faculty and instructors, our staff and your fellow students and your new alumni colleagues are so proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2020. Hello, and congratulations to you all. Our graduates from the Palliative Care Master's program, you guys have really gone through so much to finish this program. I'm sure many of you were working, you have families, and then on top of that now, you had the pandemic to deal with. So really, my heartfelt congratulations to all of you. I wish you all the best in the future. I know that you will all go on and take great care of your patients. And we wish you all of the best, and we wish you 
to stay close to us and let us know what you're all doing because I know that you're gonna go on and do great things. Dr. McPherson has told me time and time again about how wonderful you all are and the great work that you do in our program. And so I know that you won't stop that now. I encourage you to go on and be great and wonderful. Go and save the world. I was 24 years old, two months in Mozambique, happily bouncing into the oncology ward to practice my Portuguese and give a little distraction to some patients who weren't feeling so well. I saw her from afar off and she called my name. When I got to her, I could tell she wasn't doing well. The next three days spiraled into a chaos of pain and suffering. The hospital was out of morphine and no comfortable position could be found. We went from the bed to the chair to the floor to the bathroom and then we'd start all over again. I had not a clue what I was doing, but I could not do nothing. And so I offered my body as something to lean on and we cried out to God for mercy. On the third day, I climbed into bed with her. We were facing each other and she put her head on my shoulder. Her breathing began to slow and there she died in my arms. I carefully laid her exhausted body on the bed. I covered her with a kakalana, a beautiful Mozambican fabric, and I ran from the ward, sobbing and yet relieved. It was almost in that very moment that I thought to myself, this will not be the last time that I hold a dying person. Amelia and her death changed the very course of my life. You see, I didn't know Amelia well. I can't tell you the names of her children or her husband. I don't know where her house was or what made her laugh. And yet, I was invited into this incredibly intimate moment where she passed from life to death. Isn't that the beauty of our work? Isn't that the honor that's bestowed on us that in this season of life, when people are deciding what's most important on who is most important, when they're deciding how to spend their last days, whether it be weeks or months, we are included. This is a holy work. I am sure that you each have your own story about how you came to palliative care. I would guess that there's death and suffering mingled in and that this degree is a result of a desire for more compassion and more comfort. I once heard a teaching on the Hebrew word for love, ahava. Now, it was a love of the will. It wasn't a romantic kind of love like violins and music and candles and a, oh, honey, I'm not going anywhere. It was a, you're throwing plates at my head, I'm ducking, you're screaming, and I stop and I say, hey, I'm not going anywhere. Ahava says, I've seen the very worst side of you and I'm staying. That's what palliative care is. We stay. We stay through the difficult diagnosis, through the hard to manage symptoms. We stay because we love. And I now know some 10 years later that that love paired with knowledge can be more effective. And that's what this degree did for me. I would like to thank Lynn McPherson. She's the very heart and soul of this program. We ride on her enthusiasm and her wit. She encourages each and every one of us. This program was so artfully put together, somehow Lynn convinced the elite from the palliative care world to come and to teach us. They did it with such humility. They validated our ideas. They encouraged us to go deeper. They steered us in the right direction. Our learning covered the whole spectrum from what palliative care is to communication, to spiritual care, pain management, symptom management. And now it might be an online degree, but it was immensely creative from infographics to elevator speeches to recording ourselves giving bad news and interdisciplinary meetings via Zoom. We also know that we did not get here on our own. For me, it was God who placed the desire in me in the first place and gave me the strength to finish. My husband, who stepped up in so many ways. My four daughters, who thought their mama could do anything. My family, though they were far, never wavered in their support. And my friends, who would take me out on a girl's night, just to let loose a little bit. I know you had your own support system, too, and they deserve all our appreciation. So, a big thanks. And now, summer class of 2020, Congratulations, we are palliative care specialists. And I know none of us could have imagined we would graduate in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. And yet here we are. Nothing feels normal. Nothing feels certain. Plans have been foiled without any chance of rescheduling. 
And yet, maybe we're getting a glimpse into the feelings and the emotions that our patients feel every single day. Mother Teresa said, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. So go now with your knowledge and with your ahava, doing small things with great love. Congratulations. My name is Diane Meyer. I am the director of the Center to Advance Palliative Care, a national organization whose mission is to improve access to high quality health care during serious illness, both for patients living with serious illness and for those that love them and care about them, whether family or friends. And um, our mission has been both to expand access to specialty level palliative care, that is people who have gotten extra training beyond their um, disciplinary degree like you have, um, as well as for all frontline clinicians, um, nurses working on inpatient units in nursing homes, in the home, in office settings, uh, social workers, chaplains, physicians, pharmacists, physical therapists, um, everybody who has a part to play to contribute to the care of people living with serious illness. And uh, I want to congratulate you for choosing to get additional training in palliative care because you are part of really a global movement, certainly a national movement, but also a global movement to shift the focus of health care back to where it belongs on the needs of the patient and the family. And to... Um, remind ourselves that we exist to serve the patient and the family. And we've gotten kind of caught up in the business of healthcare and in doing the things that bring in reimbursement as opposed to doing the things that are what patients and families actually need and would benefit from. And I think about this as um, healthcare being in a pre-Copernican state. Uh, you may remember from high school that Copernicus was the guy who figured out that the earth orbited around the sun and that the sun did not orbit around the earth. And of course he was demonized and punished for that belief, which flew in the face of centuries of mythologic thinking. And I think about the healthcare system as being in a pre-Copernican space as well. We think about the healthcare system as a place, uh, marble and glass lobbies, um, offices, bricks and mortar. Um, so we ask the patient and the family to orbit around us, to orbit around the healthcare system, when in fact the healthcare system or healthcare delivery should be orbiting around the needs of the patient and the family. And that is the root ethos and concept uh, behind palliative care, that everything begins and really should end with the needs of the patient and the family, and that everything that we do, including the structures and processes of our healthcare system, should be designed around best meeting the needs of patients and families. And the training that you have received during this master's program is giving you the tools and resources you need to incorporate that discipline of always beginning with who is this person in front of me? Who are the people who love him or her? What is important to them? What matters to them? What are their biggest fears and concerns? What are their hopes? What, what do they want our help with? Um, and by beginning with that kind of open heart, and curiosity about the people who are entrusting themselves to us. Um, we can actually make a big difference for people. Um, it, it's a change in mindset from doing what gets paid for um, most generously to doing what most meets the needs of of our patients and their families. So I congratulate you for pursuing this additional training and for becoming part of what I hope will be a tidal wave that will move our healthcare system uh, 
back in the right direction, back to being organized um, around the people we serve. So congratulations to all of you. I'm delighted to be able um, to offer that. And thank you again for the honor of being invited to, to contribute to your graduation ceremony. Hello, graduates, faculty, staff, family, and friends. My name is Dr. Lynn McPherson, and I'm the program director of the online Master of Science and Graduate Certificate program in palliative care. In a way, it feels like this day has been a long time in coming. On the other hand, it seems like the last few years have zipped by. I am so proud and excited to be hosting our virtual graduation celebration. This is the culmination of all of your blood, sweat, and tears, and I am inordinately proud of each of you. You made it. I cried 55 times over your 55 word stories and over at least 80% of your reflective posts over the past two years. You survived the four video recorded team meetings, and weren't you glad I didn't actually kill my husband, A.D.? My husband is alive and well. Thank you. We have 44 Master of Science graduates in this, our second cohort, and many more students who have earned a graduate certificate. We have borrowed our program battle cry from Mahatma Gandhi, live as if you were to die tomorrow, but learn as if you were to live forever. You embraced this idea in word and deed and did an unbelievable job. I think it's pretty incredible that right when your class was starting, with what might be considered the hardest course in this program, the dreaded research course, a worldwide pandemic rolled into town. Many of you were working double shifts under extremely difficult conditions, yet you hung in there and got the job done. It has been recognized that palliative care practitioners have been a silver lining in the COVID crisis. And not only did you deliver, you did it while completing challenging coursework and never missed a beat. Speaking of the research course, as we did last year, I asked you to nominate a faculty member for Teacher of the Year, and subsequently you all voted. I knew it would be a challenging test because we have so many excellent faculty members, and indeed competition was fierce. But I'm happy to report that Dr. Arif Kamal, one of the course managers of the research course, was selected as our Teacher of the Year. Dr. Kamal is the Physician Quality and Outcomes Officer for the Duke Cancer Institute and is an Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Medical Oncology and Section of Palliative Care at Duke University. Dr. Kamal completed an internal medicine residency, a hospice and palliative medicine fellowship, and a hematology oncology fellowship. He holds a master's in health sciences and clinical research and a master's in business administration. All I know is I read a lot of stories about the Brownie analogy in the Kamal House in your reflective posts. Congratulations, Dr. Kamal. I would be remiss if I did not thank some people. First, Dean Natalie Eddington and my chair, Dr. Jill Morgan. My first line of attack when I have an awesome idea is Dr. Morgan. When I get one of my crazy ideas, I go to Dr. Morgan and say, hey, Guess what I've been thinking about doing? This woman clearly deserves a raise. She shows no fear. And she calmly says, tell me about it. Because of Dr. Morgan, I've been able to get into plenty of mischief in my career, but it's this program that I'm most proud of. I'd like to thank the staff of our department and the graduate school. Ms. Lisa Calvert-Chalk, program manager of our department, knows every human being on campus and has smoothed the way countless times in the development and execution of this program. Thanks also to Mr. Eric Lee, our Senior Academic Program Specialist, who frankly keeps the wheels on the bus. He is definitely our fix-it man in this program. I am so proud of how well our courses are designed and executed in this program that, I, that words actually fail me. I am incredibly grateful for the opportunity the faculty and I have had to work with the brilliant instructional designers and instructional technologists on our campus. They work tirelessly to assure the highest possible quality in our program. Next on the list is my husband, Jim McPherson, who, as I said, is alive and well. Up until March of this year, Jim helped me take our exhibit materials literally around the world, helping me set it up and tear it down again. I think that Jim can literally market this program better than I can. It goes without saying that we have the finest faculty in the world. No one teaches for the money. For our faculty, it's a labor of love, and I believe you have all benefited from the interdisciplinary presence in your coursework. 
I'm very appreciative of our speakers today, Dean Eddington, Dr. Jill Morgan, our special guest, Dr. Diane Meyer, the queen of CAPSI, and Lane Heller, our student representative. I have to give a shout out to your families and friends who graciously allow you the time to complete this program. When an adult commits to completing a degree, the whole family sacrifices. And last, but by no means least, I want to thank you, our graduates, for jumping into the great unknown of this program. All of you joined even before we had a graduate from this program, trusting that you would receive a quality experience. I received permission from one of our graduates, Dawn Baker, to read a 55-word story she wrote in her last reflection post titled Graduation Day. Here it goes. Graduation Day is finally here. Take a moment to soak it all in and be proud of this accomplishment. Despite a pandemic and social issues at hand, we made it through. We have so much to offer. Look forward to what lies ahead. Go out and make a difference. The class of 2020 rocks. Indeed, you do rock. As Mother Teresa said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the water to create many ripples. When I think of the impact you will all have in your careers, caring for people at the most vulnerable point in their lives, I actually get goosebumps. I am most grateful for all of you, my little ripple makers. Congratulations to the Palliative Care Master's Class of 2020. You are now officially alumni of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Sabrina Abbott, Crystal Antoine Frank, Andy Orwari, Don Baker, Ryan Baldeo, Mary Bizak, Ryan Costantino, Catherine DeFrancesco, Holly Donovan, Azade Orfani, Elizabeth Geislin, Kathy Gibson, Anne Goldsboro, Kathy Gubin, Lane Heller, Melissa Halawadi, Angela House, James Joseph, Farhana Kamal, Kimberly Kirsch, Christine Lakeo, Delissa Lomburis, Heather Marsh, Jennifer Martin, Megan Mitchell, Patrice Moore, Kelsey Neely, Susan Nelson, Kathleen O'Connor, Jim Files, Brooke Pritchett, Don Quinn, Laura Redling, Christiane Rooks, Joseph Scalise, Cindy Scott, Alexandra Sims, Kirsten Springmeyer, Anne Supley, Elodie Tendo, Brooke Thomas, 
Marissa Todd, Natisha Waits, Allison Yost. With the recommendation of the faculty of the graduate school in recognition of the successful completion of all requirements, I am pleased to accept the 2020 graduates and I confer upon each of you the degree Master of Science. Congratulations.